You definitely don't want to see me dance, by the way. <laughs> okay, so I want you to imagine that we have uh, the ability to, or opportunity to colonize a new planet. And that planet has an abundance of resource, just like ours. And that we can take all of the technology, knowledge, and science to ensure that everybody on that planet has access to their basic needs. So, for example, we can automate food production so that we can give people access to nutrients so they don't have to starve. We can enable people to access knowledge and skills from a, an internet so that they can learn and develop skills in whatever area they want. And that we can use artificial intelligence to ensure that everybody ha has their mental and physical needs met. So in a world where we don't have to work, what would our objective function be? Once all of our basic needs are met, what should the objective function be for that species, for our species? Should it be to improve happiness, to maximize happiness. Maybe we can put everybody in a simulator and give them all LSD, that will make everybody happy. Or maybe more subtly we can provide everybody equal opportunities to be happy, because what makes you happy might be different to what makes you happy. Or maybe even more uh, simply, we could ensure that we're minimizing unnecessary suffering. Not just unnecessary suffering to our species, but to all life. Perhaps we need to maximize equal rights or freedom. Uh, maybe we need to ensure that uh, our species is going to survive so that we can protect ourselves against meteorites or solar flares. Or maybe the objective should be to go and colonize new planets. S fortunately, scholars have been thinking about these things for uh, thousands of years, none more famously than the philosophers of Athens, Socrates, Aristotle, Plato. So if we were to start from blank, what would our economic, social, political system look like? Would it be a democracy? Or would we have uncorruptible philosopher kings like Plato described in the Republic. More fundamentally, would we have countries? Would we have property or money? And if we did have money and if we could work, would we have a minimum wage and a maximum wage? Would there be some limit in terms of the number of resources that any one individual can have? Would there be a limit on the number of children we could have? How would we police that society? How, do we, how would we bring people to justice? These are complicated questions uh, around balancing the rights of the individual against the many and ensuring that we can invest in the short term as well as the long term success of our species. So I personally want to create a world where everybody has access to their basic needs, where we're all free to do whatever we want and potentially hopefully maximize our own dignity, uh, ensure the survival of our species and give everybody an opportunity to contribute positively to society. And I think that that's generally common amongst most of, uh, most of the people around the world. But we, that's not how our current system is set up. Currently, we're trying to maximize GDP. Governments are fighting each other to increase GDP, and capitalism is an enabler of this maximization. And there's a growing concern over the past several decades that this is not sustainable. And it's creating what is called a tragedy of the commons, and it's leading potentially to the destruction of our planet and our species. So we can't easily start from blank because governments have spent thousands of years investing in infrastructure and laws to create services and products that we can export to increase our GDP. And it's provided a tremendous amount of growth over the past centuries, but where, com where countries now can't uh, export to increase their GDP, we end up putting our future generations in debt, and we create uh, more tax and, uh, and austerity for our people, and I'm sure that Greece doesn't have any familiarity with that. But, uh, so companies are the agents of innovation, and their primary objective is to, is to increase profit. And more recently, since the 80s, that objective has been more myopic, and it's about increasing shareholder value, making shareholder returns. And that has often come at the cost of good products and sustainable uh, employment. So companies have become a mechanism to accumulate wealth and power, and this is now happening uh, at unprecedented rates. We're seeing it happen more and more. The phrase, money makes money, is now more true than ever before. And so there's a handful of companies that are now monopolizing industry, and they have access to infinite amount of cheap capital from the, the market to allow them to uh, starve their competitors, to access talent, to be able to pay that talent potentially more than what they're worth, and it's, uh, capitalism has become hijacked, essentially, to benefit the few. 
So what happens if you're a company and you have to provide your 5% returns to your shareholders uh, and you can't innovate, you can't grow your 5%, what tends to happen is that CEOs, uh, business leaders will make decisions that compromise the quality of their products, they avoid tax, they exploit their users, they squeeze their employees, they destroy the environment and they enslave other species, we take advantage of other, other species. And if you're a CEO and you're not providing those 5% returns, then you'll be replaced by a CEO that does. So I, uh, I run an artificial intelligence company in, in London, and uh, whilst we're doing very, very well, I have to ask myself, how does a company compete with another company that doesn't need to make money? How does my company ultimately compete with a company that can undercut my prices, avoid tax, pay talent more than pro probably I ever could? And even if I could slay those dragons, even if I could build a company that is amazing, that does these things, then maybe my company will become the dragon and I will become a slave to the market. So I realized the answer to how do you compete with a company that doesn't need to make money is to change the rules of the game. We, we remove the concept of a company. And so I'm trying to create an organizational structure that's radically new. We don't have any hierarchies or managers or KPIs. Everybody's free to work wherever they want, however they want, wherever they want. We even go so far that people make public recommendations for their salary, so everybody publicly declares what they should be paid, and then everybody votes on whether those salaries should be reduced or increased or kept the same. And we use machine learning to determine how many votes one person has for another. In fact, one of my most successful functioning team teams is a group of uh, six people, and one's based here in Athens. In fact, he's in the audience now. We have somebody in Luxembourg, Vienna, uh, um, uh, New York, London, Lithuania, and they're the most, one of my most successful teams. So we can prove that we can bring people together to do amazing things. So I'm trying to create an organization that operates very much like a swarm, where we decentralize decision-making, where people who are best placed to make those decisions are empowered and enabled to do that. And we're using technologies like AI and blockchain to do this. And the challenge is, how do you build a platform that brings all of the different skills together, developers and designers and marketers and salespeople and leaders and innovators, how do you build a platform that brings all of these people together and help them build products or services in a decentralized way? It's a big challenge. And this organizational structure that I'm creating, I don't just want to work for 100 people or 200 people or 2,000 people or 2 million people. I'm trying to figure out how can we build a structure that will scale to a planet, that will enable anyone from wherever they are, whether you're in India or China or Greece or Africa, to be able to contribute to products and services and be remunerated fairly for that contribution, for you to be in control of how you want to distribute your time and be rewarded fairly for it. To be, able to, un to be able to boot up, talent, uh, boot up uh, ideas and, and uh, unlock talent that is uh, around the, the, the globe, and to be able to pay that talent fairly. It's a bit like open source, the open source model, but instead of you contributing code and getting kudos, getting thumbs up, you contribute your code and you get remunerated based on some sort of economic model. Uh, these organizations are called decentralized um, uh, autonomous organizations. And as I said, they are being enabled by blockchain, AI, new thinking, organizational design, and organizational psychology. And if I was to tell you that my plan is for the next 30 years to figure out how do I decentralize this planet, that's my 30-year plan. How can we create a world where anybody can contribute positively to society and be remunerated fairly for that contribution? And it might seem that the world is going in the opposite direction. We have Brexit and Trump. We have a growing mindset around nationalism. Uh, we have the use of technology in China to control people using social scoring, uh, which is very interesting. But I promise you there's a resistance happening. Like all of these things, they're cyclic. There's a resistance happening in the background um, uh, against this, uh, this centralization, and it's often referred to as decentralization. And if you can make it work, if you can create companies without the need of having centralized organizations, and I would argue that we don't need to have companies like Facebook and Uber and Air Airbnb. Uh, in fact, let's look at our social networks. Our social networks, are primarily, but their primary driver is to generate profit. And they have armies of PhDs whose job it is to keep you looking at that screen. The longer that you look at the screen, the more profit they get. And it's you or your kids versus an army of PhDs. I know who's going to win that battle. And, uh, but if we could create an open source, an open version of these social networks, let's say, 
Uh, and it would only take a few dollars per year, so users charging a few dollars per year, paying a few dollars per year, to generate the billions of dollars that you need to support an open source community of people driving that forwards. And when, once these systems start to become weaponized, which they are starting to be weaponized, instead of worrying about what shareholders think, we can turn them off, because that's the right thing for humanity. So instead of creating products, pro products that are product uh, that are profit driven we can create products that are purpose driven and i would argue that if you can do this then many of these services many of these products that we use every single day will become commoditized they'll become almost free because there isn't this profit driver so by removing the concept of companies the, the companies that are the agents for accelerating gdp and by enabling people to work frictionlessly from anywhere in the world and be remunerated fairly for that Governments need to completely rethink what their purpose is. Instead of creating infrastructure that, and fighting over GDP, they might need to think about how to create the, the uh, environments and societies that maximize well-being and happiness. And more importantly, they need to t turn their attention to some global problems that we're experiencing or going to experience over the next few decades. We have climate change, we have antimicrobial resistance, we have um, uh, an emerging water crisis, we have ecological collapse because of pollution and pesticides, we have biological and artificial intelligent warfare, and we have potentially a huge amount of job losses that might happen through uh, automation, which could cause a huge amount of social unrest. And it's actually predicted that in the next 30 years that we are going to build a superintelligence that's smarter than us in every single possible way. It will be the last invention that humanity ever creates. And I'm worried that if we are not cooperating as a species, if we are not working together, it will see us as a threat and it will remove us from the planet. And it's the, the ultimate blank. Uh, so just to summarize, I think there are three things that we can do uh, as a species to mitigate some of these risks. The first thing is, I think we need to completely rethink what our objective function is. We need to rethink, we need to be smarter than just increasing GDP. And we need to stop celebrating people and organizations that are accumulating wealth. And we need to start celebrating people that are solving human problems and creating social positive impact. Um, we need to be, the second thing we need to do is to be much more conscientious about what we consume. You vote for the people, for the companies, uh, by by paying for their services or by looking at that screen. You, you vote. If you stop doing that, those companies won't survive or they'll do better. So we need to be much more conscientious about what we're consuming. And uh, it's not just about products either, it's about also media. We need to make media accountable. And finally, I think that we can create these decentral or decentralized autonomous organizations to unlock global talent, to enable anybody from anywhere in the world to be able to cooperate instead of what's currently happening now, which is forcing people to compete. And I think that these, uh, these uh, systems will also help redistribute wealth and power uh, much more evenly. And if we get it right, then I think that we're going to be able to enable the best of humanity to flourish instead of the worst. Thank you for listening.